we wouldn't be called IFAF if we didn't talk about the biggest news in Idaho Falls this week. Right. Christopher Tapp found dead, I believe, in a hotel room in Las Vegas. What a tragedy. I'm just heartbroken for this guy, yeah. his family, his friends. Heartbroken. Well, and he just kept getting the shit end of the stick. He really did. You know? If you don't know the story, to catch you up to speed real quick, in 1996, a young lady by the name of Angie Dodge was murdered, and Christopher Tapp was uh, convicted of that two years later in 98. He spent 20, some people saying 21 years in jail, until they found the real killer. Now, this was one of the first cases, I think, in the world where they used familial DNA Mm -hmm. to catch the real killer. Do we know the name of the real killer? I want to say Brian Driggs, but I'm not sure. Oof. That name Brian sound- Drips. Mm. See, that That's sounds like her murderer's name. <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> that sounds terrible, What's but What's the it difference does? between tap and drips? Innocence, for one. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and this guy, and I guess, I guess Drips was living in Boise. Oh, wow. You know, not too far, or Meridian area. Like I kind of can't believe that he got away with it for that long. Certainly, he must have read news articles over the years. Oh, we're we're opening all these old cold case files now, and we're catching the real criminal here. Mm-hmm. As he's seeing that come across his news feed, every day, I imagine, more than once a day, he's thinking, oh, man, they're going to get me eventually. What's that got to be like? No sympathy for the guy, by the way. No. Um, because, you know, poor Christopher Tapp, 20 years in jail. I mean... The guy did, passed away at 47 years old, so not quite half his life was taken from him by the city of Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. And then last well, and year- his prime years, too. His, the prime years of his life. Yeah. And it was the Idaho Innocence Project that, um, you know, and I think it was the mother, it was Carol Dodge, the mother of Angie Dodge, wasn't it, who really championed- and along with Jolene Thomas and a few other people. That's so awesome. Who really championed, you know, opening this back up, finding mm-hmm. the real killer. And thank goodness we did. Thank goodness he at least saw justice mm-hmm. in his lifetime. Right. Last year, he was awarded $11.7 million from the city of Idaho Falls. And he said, you know, what you would imagine someone in that situation would say is, this doesn't make up for it. No, no amount of money will make up for what I went through. I mean, like, first of all, imagine a poor guy, you know, I think he was 21 when he was convicted, <sighs> looked like he was 15. Ugh. So, you know, I'm I'm sure he had his run-ins in jail. Mm-hmm. He contracted tuberculosis in jail that wasn't even diagnosed or treated until he got out. Wow. I mean, just the worst. Ugh. The worst possible case scenario imaginable for this guy. Mm-hmm. So when he got that $11.7 million last year in June of 2022, he said, no amount of money can make up for what I've lost. Mm -hmm. And this will help me to move forward in my life. Well, because you can't get a job after that. Not really. I mean... Like, how do you reintegrate into society when you've spent nearly half your life in the system? Right. You know, from your most formative years. And I believe since he's been out, he's been on sort of a speaking circuit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe not a job, but certainly things to do and a cause to champion and promote. Mm -hmm. Well, and knowing that you were in jail and stuff for something you didn't commit, like, at least if you were in jail for a crime you committed, then you're not paranoid at, like, everything you have and you've built being taken away from you for no reason. Because that's what happened to him. That's exactly what happened. He didn't do anything wrong and everything was taken from him. And that's why I think that someone like that would have a really hard time reintegrating into society because he sees that it doesn't matter if he's good or if he's morally upstanding or not, it can still be taken from him legally. Right. And I can't imagine what that feeling must be like, I was friends with him on Facebook. I I watched him get engaged. I watched him get married. Mm -hmm. And that's another tragic part of this story. His wife, now, they were going through a divorce. So I don't know. I don't know what's involved there. You know, as I understand that the timeline was, got out of prison, some time went by, got engaged, got married, got the settlement, then was going through divorce proceedings when his wife, Stacey Marie Tapp, was killed in a car accident 
oh. three months before he passed away in Las Vegas. Oh, that's sad. So the first story that came out was there was an accident and he uh, received some head trauma and then died from that. And then the second story that came out was the accident was, and here's the part of me that goes, are we sure about that? Um, he slipped on a shoe, fell and hit his head on the way down. And that's the injury that he sustained. Took him to the hospital. He died there. I really want more information. Well, yeah. Was well, he with anybody? That's what was I want to know. Was he alone? What was in his bloodstream? Because like, how would and they know really he- And that's really none of my business right. now. But at least it would explain it. Right. Like if he was inebriated when he fell over- then that would explain, like, especially if he was like drunk, for example, that would explain how a head a head injury like that could kill him. Yeah. Because his his blood would be so thin, he could bleed out a lot faster. That sort of thing. And maybe, yeah, and maybe you know? he didn't have the the capacity. But I mean, blunt force trauma to and where on the head, the back of the head, right? Like, and and I, I'm going to apply Occam's razor here. Mm-hmm. That's we were actually just talking about this a couple of shows ago. We were, yeah. You said. Um, if you hear hooves, don't think zebra, think horses. Occam's razor basically states that the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. Mm-hmm. But I know that there's going to be people saying, well, he was in Vegas with $11 million and then died in a, I, I don't want to say mysterious fashion, because mm-hmm. we let's say we've got all the facts. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. He slipped on a shoe and hit his head and died. But it... You know who's going to have a heyday with this are the true crime podcasters. Right. And just the conspiracy theorists in general. What a tragedy. You know, uh, you hear about people living a charmed life. Mm -hmm. He just lived a tragic life. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm so sad about it. I know several people who are close to him and it breaks my heart for them. And and he, at least he left a legacy. You know, along with the Innocence Project, he was a big champion of... Idaho's wrongful conviction law, mm-hmm. where you know people now, if if they are wrongfully convicted and then that conviction is overturned, they're now com- victims are these victims are compensated by the state, right? And I think that's so important. And I think it that, is. Well, I think that it forces people to have to do their job well. Exactly. Investigators have got to be have got to be more locked on. We've right. got to have better rules about evidence and. You know, now with DNA, I know we already do. You know, mm-hmm. the, it's not like the problem has already been solved, but kind of. It definitely helps. This is one reason why I I can't support the death penalty. Not because I don't believe that there are crimes that aren't worthy of being killed for. I do, genuinely. But the thing is, there are too many circumstances where people are wrongfully convicted, you know, who end up on death row, who some are exonerated and some are not. Right. And the thing is, until that number is zero, I just can't justify condemning a potentially innocent person to death, you know, which sucks. But I think that if there's like, you know, evidence that cannot possibly be disproven, like if we see this person on a video committing the entire crime, they say their name and their social security number, and also they split their wrists open and leave a ton of blood DNA at the scene, and they say, ha you can check that later uh, against my cousin. And yeah. then <laughs> and then that's how we catch them. I was going to say, you need DNA <laughs> because of all the deep fakes now. Right. And all the AI-created videos. You've got yeah. celebrities suing companies now because they're placing those celebrities in their ads. Right. It's insane. Like, I don't mm-hmm. even know what to believe anymore. Yeah. The old expression used to be, don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Right. And now it's like, don't believe what you see or hear. Well, how am I supposed to make a informed decision on anything? Right. So Christopher Tapp, Godspeed. I hope that the next life treats you better than this one. 